Like many of you, I've grown up on the Call of Duty series, getting my roots in 2009 with the now classic MW2, and over the years we've gotten many COD games, some good, some great, and some not so good games. And while I love the multiplayer and other modes like Zombies and Spec Ops, I didn't always have Xbox Live because growing up I only had an Xbox so I would play the campaigns. And to be honest, those are some of my favorite parts of Call of Duty. I'm more of a single player kind of guy anyways, always have been, so I thought it'd be fun to go over my top 8 Call of Duty campaigns. It would be top 10, but I don't remember a good chunk of the other campaigns, and if that's the case, I probably didn't like it anyway. Maybe sometime in the future I'll play through those ones that I don't really remember all that much and make a full list, but anyways, with all that being said, let's get into it. So kicking off the list, at number 8 we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. The first installment in the rebooted MW series. And probably the only good campaign of the new three. I mean, I like two well enough, but I like this one a little more. While these games never had much of a chance to capture the magic of the original Modern Warfare series, I did like this one. While the campaign itself isn't nothing groundbreaking after some of the stinkers we were getting at the time, this was pretty okay. I thought they handled some of the returning characters pretty well, and I liked some of the new characters like Farrah and Alex. The gameplay, at least, um, in certain missions, felt really nice and tight. That's what she said! <laughs> I love go the going dark mission, and the intro really goes off, off the bat. When you compare it to the last two Modern Warfare games that we got recently, this one hits the nail on the head. Very cinematic, and the gameplay is fun. It has a lot of good, but some bad. The worst thing this game does is a whole lot of show when it should just tell. It tries to add shock value to the game, like classic Modern Warfare 2 No Russian mission, and I just feel like it didn't land... Not the best, but better than a good handful of the other campaigns. At number 7 we have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Now I know a lot of people weren't a fan of this game when it came out and it was doomed from the start as this game didn't even start as a Black Ops game. It was originally developed by another studio before going to Treyarch. The multiplayer, really not that good. Uh, the zombies, not really a fan, but I'm picky. But the story, while not the best, I like the idea here. I don't know why they changed some of the voice actors. I thought that was pretty dumb. They should have kept, you know, a, a lot of them in. Woods doesn't sound like Woods. Out on the ridge line. We do this quiet, Mason. Yeah, you're the expert in quiet. I'm a goddamn onion, Mason. You should know that. Hudson doesn't sound right. It's it's all bad, but I can look past that. I like playing as Bell, who is basically just a shell that we can. Well, not really a shell, but he's a uh, create a character, if you will. So we make some character stats and get right to it. I like the espionage aspects and the gameplay feels really good. The stealth sections were lit. And I think the set pieces here are a little better than Modern Warfare 2019. And while I seen the ending coming from a mile away, I liked it. This game is really just a guilty pleasure for me, I guess, as everything else about this game I really don't like. But the campaign, I like it a lot. I probably shouldn't, but I do. So go ahead, talk your trash in the comments below. I can't completely defend this campaign, but at least it's better than... I shoot Nazis. They die. That's my plan. Eesh. So, moving on. Number six is going to be Call of Duty World at War. Now, even though at this time Call of Duty started moving away from the World War II shooter to a more modern setting, Treyarch decided to make one more banger, and they did just that. It'd be easy to say this game is legendary for just alone starting zombies, one of COD's biggest modes to date, but we're here for the campaign. And Treyarch is really good about making a very serious but fun story to follow. World War II, if you didn't know, was not a fun time, and it shows the true horrors of the time period. The cutscenes having real World War II footage kind of mixing with their own, it, it goes from quiet to chaos real quick. And there's a lot of tense moments, especially if you put it on veteran, then it just becomes ridiculous. This game gave us the man, the myth, the legend, at least as I know him, Victor Reznov. There's not a single bad mission here, and how cool was it back in the day to play this with a friend on split screen? Ah, you remember split screen? <laughs> this is a COD game I like to come back to every once in a while, and I do love it, especially the ending. It really gives you the sense of accomplishment after all this craziness that you go through that, while not directly historically accurate it still goes off of a lot of actual battles which is really cool but these games down the list just do it better i guess for me at least up next at number five is call of duty modern warfare 3. you terrorists no you oh god not that one not that one no, I'm talking about the real Modern Warfare 3, the game that didn't shit the bed, smack you in the face and say, hey, I'm overpriced DLC. No, I'm talking about the ending to a trilogy. 
the original Modern Warfare trilogy. It's basically World War III. Makarov has started a global war. We fight in the streets of New York. That's just the start, and that's super sick. You know, the boys are back, so Price... Well, they're back for a little. Oh, no, 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 no! So the combat and overall gameplay did feel like a downgrade, or at least the exact same thing from the previous Modern Warfare, even graphically, but it still looked pretty good for the time. I just kind of wonder what happened there. But anyways, from chaos to emotional, this game is a fun, wild ride. From fighting in New York to being an actual juggernaut, which was the coolest shit at the time, especially I was pretty young and I'd always wanted to be one of those big hulking guys. This game is great. While having some filler missions, it wraps up the story in a really great way. And even brings no Russian to a full circle with Yuri. I didn't see that coming, and it's great. What's also great is finally getting the chance to hang Makarov. I haven't had the chance to play this one in a little bit, so maybe nostalgia swing my pick here, but especially compared to what we have now, you can't go wrong with this gem. Coming in at number 4 is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now this is the game that made Call of Duty a household name. Of course with the multiplayer, but even with the campaign, taking Call of Duty out of the World War II setting for a more modern setting. Ah, I see what they I see what they did there. For its age, it's great, and it still holds up, even to this day, and if you don't like it, the remaster is great, go peep it. But this was the beginning of an amazing trilogy, bringing us Soap and Captain Price. I know Price was in earlier Call of Duty games, but I never really played those that much growing up, so this version will always be my Captain Price. But the story, while not super complex, I mean most Call of Duty campaigns aren't that complex, it felt like something that could really happen. This game gave us the first legendary AC-130 mission, feeling like a demigod holding life just in the palm of your hand the last mission feeling like an action hero and it's not super crazy it's actually a pretty kind of slow moment it feels badass i got into this game a little later in life and i probably mainly love it for just starting one of my favorite series in cod but i can't help but respect this game for the time 2007 this game looked pretty good and played like butter and cops the spot at number four these last three campaigns I come back to frequently this is the first these are the first three games I think of when I want to play like a cod campaign and it was really hard to place these three, but I wanted to make this video, so here we go, moving on to number three. Call of Duty Black Ops 2, the beginning of the future-based CODs, which shouldn't be a bad thing, but this game actually did it right. I remember the hype for this game after Black Ops 1, it was crazy, and it delivered. Side note, the game takes place in 2025 mainly, and we are now approaching that exact year really fast. I remember being a kid in 2012 thinking, wow, that's far away. And now I'm a grown ass man waiting for that year because GTA 6 is supposed to come out that year. But anyways, we go back and forth between the future and the past, getting to be Alex Mason again, which is great. God, I love seeing the boy. While getting to be David Mason in the future, his son, which was pretty dope, making the perfect mix of future-ish and the stuff we know and love. And this game gives us a lot of options on how the story will end. Well, maybe not a lot, but at least two that I know, or three, because I think there's a secret ending. And usually in the game, it's a pretty fine line on your decision actually making a difference. And while it's, again, not groundbreaking, it does make a difference, which still blows my mind. The action set pieces go hard, like the nightclub fight, or the last being the big bad gutting out our team. And this revenge story that's actually pretty good. Mendez is probably one of my favorite villains in the series. He's crazy, he's got purpose, and he poses a real threat, and I love it. And the boys are back. Woods, Mason, all around. This game is great. And the secret ending is just awesome, and it holds up really well today. With the bounce between future and past, the awesome level design, and the badass villain, while bringing back the boys, you got a banger. Now bringing it down to these two is really tough. My whole last childhood was these two games, and no matter how much I like any other Call of Duty, they just can't do it like these games. You probably already know what these two games are going to be, so fuck it. My number two is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the game that started it all for me. Ten-year-old me always knew about Call of Duty, but I never tried it for whatever reason until I stayed the night at my best friend's house, and he showed me this absolute classic from the Spec Ops mode, the online mode. It's no wonder this game got the love and praise it got. But for me especially, well, young me, you know, that didn't have Xbox Live at the time, this campaign blew me away for the time. This game looked real. It was even, it looks pretty real today even. It looks pretty good. I can't believe this game came out in 2009. 
The squad are just Beast, Soap, eventually Price when you get him later in the game, the man, the myth, the legend, Ghost, from running through the favela chasing down leads, literally, to defending Burger Town, to creeping through the streets of Washington after EMP made the lively city into a ghost town, this game is a non-stop banger. Mission after mission, banger. The set pieces in this game are wild and have the most controversial mission in gaming with no Russian. We talk about that mission to this day, especially now with how they fucked it up in the new Modern Warfare 3, fuck that game. But anyways, this game is an action movie from start to finish, rarely pumping the brakes, and it gets me going every time. I can't tell you how many hours I put into just the campaign alone, and the betrayal at the end? Damn. Makarov is an ideal villain, and the last missions make you beg for more, and I love this game for the nostalgia and the standards it set for all Call of Duties to come. The fun I had playing this game growing up, but yet there can only be one. And it was a super tough decision, but my number one, of course, is... Call of Duty Black Ops. Yes, I know, what a hot take, but Black Ops 1 came at a time when I was full throttle into the Call of Duty series, waiting for the next release after playing Modern Warfare 2, and what we got, I never expected. Consistent action with a deeper and more mysterious story, I immediately wanted to know what's going on. And why we are here, and why are we looking at so many damn TVs, the electric bill is gonna be wild. I think the Vietnam slash Cold War is one of my favorite times for a Call of Duty game. Something about the vibe just hits right for me, it's not like I was born around this time, much later as a matter of fact, I was born in the 90s, but something about it just hits, from fighting in Vietnam to jumping across rooftops to escape the enemy, this game is a playable movie. The characters go hard, Woods, Hudson, Reznov, Bowman, and the twist at the end, the balls this game had, it's just wild. Cinematically, this game is the GOAT, and it's my go-to when it comes to COD campaigns. Gameplay is nice, and it looks great. Again, for its age, it's just crazy. If I had anything I could nitpick about this game, it's probably the sound design. Some of the guns sound the same, like the shotguns, and that's kinda lame, but the soundtrack, my dude, that soundtrack is a certified banger. Actually, matter of fact, it's crazy I didn't mention the other soundtracks for the other games. Moving too quick. I'll just say real quick, Modern Warfare 2 and World at War are bangers as well. But anyways, this game is amazing from start to finish. Just making this video, now I might have to go play this one for the one time. And in my opinion, it's the best Call of Duty campaign. I might have to make a video on a bunch of these uh, campaigns. Primarily World at War, Modern Warfare 2, and Black Ops. Or the whole Black Ops series. I, you know, I might make videos on all of these and get into more detail. But anyways, that's just my list, and I would love to know yours down in the comments below. What's your favorite campaign? But anyways, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe to see more stuff I have done. But anyways, thanks for coming, and thanks for watching.